Hey, what's going on YouTube? Welcome to another Season 7 League of Legends Champion Guide. Today, we're going to cover Top Lane Pantheon, the Artisan of War. They are privileged to die at my feet. In the top lane, Pantheon is a very strong laner with very high poke damage, which comes from his Q ability, Spear Shot. He has a very strong stun and gap closer from his W ability and very limited counters. Even if you do have to go against a counter, there is still a rather high chance that you do win the lane. You can, however, snowball very, very hard, and just one or two kills in that early game can start it going out of control. Finally, Pantheon is a hard counter to a lot of champions. Things that generally beat up on top laners like Teemo are instead countered by Pantheon because of his kit. Now, Pantheon, however, is rather mana-hungry early on because he wants to be constantly spamming his spears, and they only have a 4-second cooldown. He is also a champion that falls off late game, and if he does fall behind, he's probably not going to be that impactful. You then also have no built-in escape or sustain, so you have to be very careful from the damage you're taking and make sure you have your lane warded. For your masteries, you'll want to go 18 Cunning and 12 Ferocity, grabbing Thunderlord's Decree as your Keystone Mastery. Thunderlord's is by far the best pick on Pantheon because it's so easy to get off. As long as you land the full duration of your E on the enemy champion, it will hit 3 times and Thunderlord's will proc just from that ability. Of course, this Keystone Mastery is also going to be great on him because he is a champion that wants to go for all-ins over and over again, and this will add a nice portion of damage to your combos and can really help you out. For your runes, you're going to want to go for attack damage reds, armor yellows, magic resist blues, and attack damage quints. These runes here are all about having some tanky stats and a bunch of attack damage so your spears hit as hard as possible. With the 140% AD ratio your spear does have, you need to get attack damage on your reds and quints to make sure you're doing as much as possible. It'll make your spears hit so incredibly hard in the early game, and there's not many champions that can deal with it. For your first summoner spell, you're going to want to grab Flash. You are a pretty squishy champion early on, and since you don't have an escape ability, Flash can save you multiple times throughout a single game. You can also use it offensively with your Aegis of Zeonia to all in your enemy from a rather long distance. Next, you'll want to grab either Teleport or Ignite. I would recommend sticking with Teleport because you will have a ton of map pressure when you combine it with your Grand Skyfall. Ignite, however, is also a really solid pick if you're looking to easily win the lane phase and you want to add some kill pressure and get snowballing. Against champions like Yasuo, you could consider going for Exhaust as well, but generally I like to stick with Teleport and Ignite. Pantheon's passive is called Aegis Protection and it's really solid because it can stop basic attacks. After you land 4 basic attacks or abilities on the enemy champion, Pantheon will then get Aegis Protection. This will then of course give you that glowing shield icon, and as soon as the enemy champion hits you with a basic attack, it will be blocked, doing absolutely no damage. It's also worth mentioning that when you use your W ability on the enemy champion, you will then also get this shield automatically. When you are going for an all-in on the enemy champion, try to have them hit your first shield and then W so you get a second right after. Pantheon's Q ability is called Spear Shot, and this is your primary way of pissing off your opponent. It'll do a ton of harassment. So as this ability is called Spear Shot, it of course is the one that will allow you to throw your spear. It has a whopping 140% bonus AD ratio and a cooldown of only 4 seconds. Basically, you're going to want to hit the enemy champion with this ability whenever the hell you can. Focus on last hitting the creeps with your auto attacks, and in between them, make sure you throw this spear onto the enemy champion. Against the majority of champions, you're going to be able to zone them from the minions with just this ability. Position yourself rather forward, and as soon as the enemy moves towards them, hit them with the spear. Rinse and repeat until your enemy drops dead. Pure skill, baby. Your W ability is Aegis of Zeonia, and it's your reliable gap closer. So, when you activate this ability, you will dash to the target enemy, dealing magic damage, and stun them for one second and automatically gain your passive shield. This ability is pretty damn solid, but you do only need one point in it because it doesn't do much damage, it is based off your ability power, and the cooldown only goes down one second whenever you put a point in the ability. Whenever you ultimate into a team fight, make sure you hit a high kill priority target with your W so they can get stunned and your team can follow up. It will also allow you to get off the full duration of your E ability. Your E ability is called Heartseeker Strike and it adds a nice chunk of damage as well, and makes proccing Thunderlord's Decree incredibly easy. Passively, this ability also makes your basic attacks and your spear shot critically strike all enemies below 15% maximum health. When you do activate it, you will channel for 0.75 seconds and deal physical damage to all enemies in a cone in front of Pantheon, which is reduced against minions. This ability will strike 3 times, which is why Thunderlord's Decree will proc on just this ability. 
As previously mentioned, this ability goes great when you do combine it with your W because it will hold them in place and landing the full duration will be incredibly easy. Now although this does have reduced damage against minions, it's still great for farming and if there is a large minion wave, it can really help you take care of it. Your ultimate is Grand Skyfall and it can add some nice damage to an all-in, but also gives you a lot of map presence. This ultimate does have a 5500 range, which is where you get all the map presence from. You can do it from rather far away. It is a channel so it will take some time to get used to, but you will blink down to the target location 2 seconds after and do a bunch of damage when you land. If you get people in the epicenter, they do take 100% more, so that's what you have to aim for. For your skill order, you first want to put a point into your ultimate whenever you can at 6, 11, and 16. Then for its incredibly high damage and strong poke, you want to max your Q ability first. You'll then want to focus on maxing your E ability, since it does do a lot of damage as well, and is great for proccing Thunderlord's decree. Last here, you do have your W ability because it doesn't do a ton of damage, but you do need to get one early point at level 2, just so you can stun the enemy. For your all-in combo, you first want to land your spear shot on the enemy champion. At this point, use your W ability, Aegis of Zeonia, to jump onto the enemy champion and stun them. You'll then want to follow up with your E ability, Heartseeker Strike, and at this point, you can start auto-attacking and use your spear shot when it does come off cooldown. Here's what the combo will look like in full speed if you do jump in with your ultimate as well. Pantheon is incredibly strong in the lane phase, but he does also rely on having a strong lane phase in order to be impactful in the later stages of the game. Focus on getting as much CS as you can and start spamming your spear shot on the enemy champion to harass their health pool. When you get them low enough, go for an all-in combo to finish them off. While you're taking down their health pool, try and deny them as much farm as you can. You can do this by standing in front of their minions so they won't be able to come close because if they do, they're going to start taking spear shots right to the face. In team fights, you'll either want to soak up damage for your team or dive onto the backline and delete an enemy carry. Your decision should reflect your item build. If you've gone for a tanky bruiser type of build, then try to use your Grand Skyfall to jump into the middle and stun the highest kill priority target with your Aegis of Zeonia. The enemy team won't have any choice but to focus you, which will give your carries a chance to get into position safely and do their damage. If you've instead gone for a high attack damage assassin build, then you'll have to use your Grand Skyfall more carefully. Use it after a fight has already broken out, and then delete a squishy carry. Now we're going to cover some hard matchups, and first up, of course, is Jace. He's going to be a hard matchup for you simply because of his entire kit. In a long skirmish, he's easily going to kick your ass with his kit, so you're going to have to avoid them as much as possible, and only engage when you can actually use your spear toss. Wait until you're confident that you can get a kill on him before you use your W, because he will easily outtrade you if you miscalculate. Since he is ranged and his hypercharge gives him increased attack speed, he'll take off your passive shield rather easily, and it's not really going to be effective for out-trading him. Next here we have Maokai, and he's the start of the really tanky champions that you can't really kill. He's going to rush that armor as fast as possible, be unkillable for you, and be way more impactful in the later stages of the game, as he'll be an unkillable tank. Fortunately for you, getting CS against Maokai isn't going to be too hard, and you're going to have to try to get him down as low as you can with your spear shot. As long as you can get some kills, you do have a chance to snowball off him if you do go for an armor penetration build. Next here we have another tank in Malphite, and he is a champion that scales off of getting armor, which is bad news for you. His E ability does scaling damage off of his armor, and since he does need to stack armor against you to survive, this is going to end up bad for you. When he's level 6 and he has his ultimate, he's also easily going to be able to all in you. Try to get some early kills so you can start snowballing, but make sure you also go for an armor penetration build so you can do at least some damage against him. For the last hard matchup I'm going to show, we have Nautilus. Not only is he incredibly tanky, but you're not even going to be able to make it through his damn shields. He will be going for Courage of the Colossus, which is really easy to proc on him, but he does also have Titan's Wrath, which is another shield he can gain whenever the hell he wants, so good luck even getting through his shields, but when you do, he's going to have a ton of armor and you're going to do no damage anyways. Against Nautilus, you're going to have to go for armor penetration yet again and try to snowball off him before he's unkillable. Now let's finish this off with our item build, which starts with either a Corrupting Potion and a Warding Totem, or a Longsword, Refillable Potion, and a Warding Totem. For my core build, I like to go for a Yumu's, Black Cleaver, and some sort of boots. Even though Yumu's is nerfed, the active is still incredibly strong on Pantheon because it will help him close a gap so he can land his W on an enemy. Black Cleaver is a great way to get more cooldown reduction and it can shred armor really really quickly with your E ability. Now if you are against an AP laner, you may want to get a Hex Drinker as well to reduce their damage and of course the shield it provides can help save your life as well. 
For our boot options, we have Merc Treads against high AP and CC teams, Ninja Tabbies against high AD teams, Boots of Swiftness if you want all-around mobility, and Ionian Boots if you do need 10% CDR. For our item pool, we first have Maw, which is a great way to get 10% more CDR. It's a great defensive if you do need some magic resist, and it really increases your attack damage as well. If you are looking to be a carry assassin, then you could get a Duskblade as well. It will deal a lot of damage and really help you accomplish your goals. If instead you wanted some lifesteal, then Death Stance is a great alternative. Your attacks will also now bleed, which can add some nice damage. Then finally, if you do need some high armor penetration, you could get an LDR or a Mortal Reminder. Generally, I like to go for the LDR, but if you do need the Grievous Wounds, then make sure you pick up that Mortal Reminder. For your defensive options, we first have the Dead Man's Plate. It's a great way to get a health pool and some armor, but the mobility it provides as well can really help out Pantheon. Then of course we have the Edge of Night, which works great on Pantheon because you can channel this before you do go in for an ultimate, and you will have a spell shield when you land. Then finally, like always, the Guardian Angel is a fantastic late game pickup, so you can come back to life and hopefully delete another target. For our full bruiser build though, we take our core, get those Merc Treads, then a Maw, Dead Man's Plate, and a Guardian Angel. We will do a lot of damage with this build, but we will be rather durable as well, and we can be a frontliner. If you were snowballing and you wanted to carry, you could take your core build, get Boots of Swiftness, then a Dusk Blade, Death Dance, and an Edge of Night. You're not going to be durable whatsoever, but you will have an absolute ton of damage. But that, ladies and gentlemen, covers everything I've got for Season 7 Top Lane Pantheon. Don't forget to check out the video description below for a link to all of my social medias where you can find more of my content. I do Riot Point giveaways on my Twitter, so that's one you should check out. Also, if you guys did enjoy the video, please make sure you thumb it up, and if you are new here, you could also subscribe. But other than that, thank you guys a ton for watching the video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace!